I hope you're ready to paint some magic painting techniques. I am going to show you some crazy stuff today and you are gonna learn a lot. When we're base coating a shape like this with a bunch of cutout holes, you can go with scant amount of paint on your foam brush and brush towards your holes if you wanna do it that way, or you can use the secret weapon. So we're gonna take our roller and we'll apply our paint really nice and evenly. I'm pressing really hard on my surface to get it worked in. You don't want glummy, glommy extra paint everywhere. You don't want it to ooze. So now what you can do because of all these holes, you can go straight over the top and always flick up and out on your edges. And because I don't have too much paint, this makes it really easy to base coat. And make sure you base coat up into your star's belly because that's going to be tree. And always when you reload, you're kind of offloading and mushing over here. What I don't wanna do is I don't wanna clean up all these edges. See how quick that was? So and we are going to do a wet in wet sponging technique. We're gonna use a sea sponge. And I prefer to tear my sea sponges down just a little bit. This was a sea sponge and I just tore it into a couple pieces. And if you get anything irritating, like a super flat area that you don't like when you push your pattern down, then go ahead and just make sure that you just give it a little haircut. You can trim these to be whatever shape you want. Um, be careful not to trim it flat. You could trim out pieces. So for example, if I didn't like this long skinny thing, I could go in there and make like a V cut just so that it's not uniform. Okay, so you wanna keep it sea spongy looking. We're gonna wet our sea sponge and we are going to squish out as much of the water as we can. You could um, step on a paper towel and get out more of it, but I think we're gonna be okay. Um, this technique is really important that you have wet paint down. So we have our base color, and then we're gonna go with this really obnoxious green on top of that. And what's gonna happen is this green is going to sponge mix with this green, and it's gonna make it into kind of a medium green with some variation, which is what we want for a natural looking sponged tree look. Numbers are number 51, number 41, and number 16. And they coordinate with our color guide, which is available on our website, studior12.com. And it gives you our numbers at the top. And then it gives you the conversion for deco art paint, Sherwin-Williams paint. So that gives you their numbers. So you can go in there and um, order those if you want. Like if you're doing a bunch of these trees, it'd be better to buy it that way. If you're doing just one, the deco art is probably your better option. And then also your hex code. So if you need something that will convert website wise, um, that's handy to have. Okay, so now we're gonna have the roller going and our sponge going. I'm gonna work in quadrants. So I'm gonna start from the bottom. So I need this to be wet, otherwise this will not work. Anything that I don't like, I can always re, um, repaint over until I like what it looks like. It's a very forgiving technique. Okay, while it's wet, we pick up quite a bit of sponge paint and then just tap it over here just to kind of blend it into the sponge and then to not have gloms of it there. And then what I like to do is push, twist, push, twist, push, twist, like a little dance and try not to go boing, 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 boing all the way across. You gotta work it while it's wet, so don't let it get dry on you. And don't go up into your dry area. The twisting action makes it a much nicer, um, a much nicer blend. It makes it um, not so 1980s sponged wall look. Okay, and then while it's wet, we're gonna highlight. So I'm gonna go in here and make my center areas 
and maybe kind of pulling out towards the, the tree limb or the tree edges a little bit stronger. I won't take it all the way to the edge. We're kind of trying to create a, just a little bit of roundness. And we'll go ahead and get this color out too. This is number 16. And where shall I put number 16? It's got just a little bit of white mixed in. And that makes it just a nice little highlight color. And remembering to... So I want it strongest in the middle, so I'll start in the middle and then work my way out without reloading that color. And if you notice, I'm just kind of almost tapping right now with that color. I'm just letting it fall where it falls. If I mess up an area, I can rinse the sponge out, wring it out the sponge, go back into my base color, feather it out, reapply the highlights. So never feel like you're stuck with this technique. It's just really forgiving. And now we're gonna go up the tree. And now we'll lot out the highlight color, go back into the middle color, which is number 41. And I'm a little bit generous right there with that, so I'll stomp it out. You can use this technique with your winter scenes. It looks really pretty. If I just did this number 41 color on top of this darker green, the darker green really consumes the color and it makes it too dark. So once it dries, it definitely darkens up. You can see it, um, I don't know if you can get this area right here. So this is getting kind of darkish. So I might wanna go ahead and pop in a few more little highlights there. And now we'll go into our highlight color. Eee. These um, Christmas tree countdowns for the little wine bottles have um, absolutely been one of our best sellers. Um, it's a good, good, good daughter-in-law gift. It's a good, it's a good gift. So you're gonna wanna make more than one. Now I'll come down to my edges, look and see what I need. If they fade too much, then I haven't done enough. And if I stipple with the sponge while this is dry, it will stay on top instead of blending so that um, you can manipulate your application that way. Such a good technique, looks great. This is the kind of background that I love to paint. We are ready to paint our star. So you wanna make sure, um, this is not a necessary stencil to have, but boy, does it make it easier. So that is a beautiful thing. Um, we are going to get a jumbo dauber. So this is a jumbo dauber, it has a place for your fingers, has just a little bit of spongy right there so that you don't glom on too much paint. No glomming here. So once you get it lined up, give yourself tape in two spots just to keep it anchored. And then we're going to get number 52 and we are going to use our dauber. And then you always offload when you load your paint. So make sure that you don't have too much and you'll hold it down when it gets to the edges to keep it from suctioning up. This is how I do all large space. Um, I either use a roller or I use a jumbo dauber because it's easier. So see how I'm working from the middle and kind of circling my way out? While it's wet in the middle, that's when it'll feather nicely. So this may not seem like a big deal, but this is a pro tip. No hippie noodles were blown, but it is a good pro tip. This is about 
a quarter of an inch small enough to use the jumbo dauber and I might have switched, um, if it were bigger, I might have switched to the roller. Okay, we're gonna let that get dry. I'll use my blow dryer and then we're gonna give it a second coat. Now I'm gonna peek and see if I got all my edges. I thought maybe this one was not quite. Drop it back down and let's do a little shading before we get dry. So I'm gonna load it on one side of my um, applicator and then I'm gonna blend it on my applicator but not so it's all over and then I'm just gonna walk it around the edges of my star with the yellow side staying to the inside. Really important, yellow side stays to the inside. Look at how awesome that looks. Okay, let's reveal. And now we have a fully shaded star. Such a great trick. All right, guys, I have a light stencil. Um, this is such a cheater, wonderful, absolutely perfect reason to have a stencil because if I had to trace all of these and base all of these, um, I would be a little bit sad. So we're gonna tape in two spots. I'm gonna stay out of my just dried yellow star and make sure that my stencil is secured. This has got locating rings for the holes that the bottles go peek out of. That's gonna be your ornaments, so these are gonna be the lights. So we're gonna go ahead and tackle the cord first. I think we're gonna go with a number 13 and number 36 color. We'll start with the dark and then highlight. You could do this without doing the cord at all if you wanted to, um, but since we have it, we're gonna go ahead and use it. If you get a stray hair in your dome brush, don't be afraid to pick them out. Um, the natural fibers always have stray hairs. Okay, so now we're gonna go and just use number 13 and glasses so that we can see. And go ahead and hit the base of your bulbs at the same time. I love that this is all masked for me. Just makes it so easy. Imagine giving these as gifts and having to do all of these um, by hand. So now if you have, I have five daughter-in-laws, right? You could have nieces, nephews, best friends, um, yourself, uh, workmates, that kind of thing. And you could easily replicate over and over and over again and get them done in minutes. But if you don't start stop talking, they won't get done. Make sure if you are enjoying this content that you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see other great techniques. Okay, so now I'll peek and that looks perfect. All right, so we'll do a second base coat. Still on number 13. We're gonna take the littlest mezzaluna, the small. We're gonna dip it. It's a very firm um, little crescenty shaped brush and we're just going to give a little highlight, dry brush to highlight right in the middle of our bulbs. We can also give it a little string on one side or the other of my strings. don't want to cover it all up. You just want a little bit of action. Okay, we're done with that part. Now let's get our lights. Let's get lit. Got our small brush and we are going to concentrate in the middle and let it fade out. Okay, so it can have yellow everywhere, but you want it to be strongest in the center. So go here, just kind of roll that out and then soft at the edges. 
And we'll just do medium all the way across. And then we'll highlight the middle. I think that'll be easier. And that means I can switch to a bigger brush. Let's take a peek. Cute, cute, cute. Okay, they need to be brighter, so I'm gonna give it a bigger base coat. Second base coat. Okay, I think that's good. Now we'll get into a little brush and we're going to get out some white, which is number 27. And we'll just do a little brush mix with the white, wipe it off, and then just right there in the middle. All right, now we're going to neutralize our brush in yellow. Wipe it all out. And then I'm gonna pick up this color and mix it and dry off of my brush. And then this is gonna be the shade at the base. Give it just a little bit of depth. Take a peek. Okay, that's getting cute. Now we need to make it more electric. So I'm gonna make a glow around each light. So this is going to go strongest in the middle, over the, the gray and everything. Make sure you wipe off your brush. You want this to be delicate, not base coaty. Cute, cute, cute. So I hope that you are loving these techniques. You can use these techniques on any kind of glowing bug, um, gems, pearls, anything that you want to have glow, you can use this technique. Just change your color to be like in the family of the color that you want to use it on. Okay, now we're going to dirty brush, add some white. Wipe it off really well. And I'm going to neutralize that just a little bit. So I'll do a second load and you can see what my color looks like. It was darker and now it's lighter. And now I'm going to give it just a center of the light bulb area, right in the middle of that highlight that I did. And that'll perk up the glow. When we're doing glow like this, it's really important that you know why you're doing what you're doing. We make, um, we pretend like we're serving a plate of spaghetti. You have to have your plate, okay, so the green is our plate. Then we put noodles, okay? So the noodles can't be not on our plate. So we've got our tree is our plate. Then the noodles are gonna be the glow of the light. So that comes in from the edges of the plate. And then when you put your sauce on top, you have to be within your noodles or your pasta so that it can be mixed around and do that. You wouldn't want it all on one side or all on the other or just only on the plate. You want it on your noodles. So the white is the sauce. So when we're doing this, we need to make sure that we've built this foundation, a pyramid almost, and make sure that you're not with your white over on your green because that will be too stark and it'll be a sudden jump and you won't like the effect. Okay, we're getting there, I love it. Okay, so I wanna also talk about how do you fix something if you have dumped your spaghetti sauce on your plate, okay? How do you fix that? So you could take your foam brush or even your roller, say I messed up in this corner, I got distracted, I was watching TV while I was painting, whatever. Um, you could roll that out, you can sponge that back, and then you could reapply your stencil. 
That is why we love stencils is because you can use them over and over. Once you peel it off, unlike vinyl, um, you're, you gotta go cut a whole nother one. You gotta weed the thing. You gotta do it again. And relining up a vinyl on top of detail like this would be very difficult to do. So that's why I am in love with stencils. Okay, I'm back over to the little tiny mezzaluna. And now we're gonna do a strong highlight. So we're just gonna, uh, I wanna blot that off. A little too much. Make sure you're in your lightest area with your strong highlight. I'm not scumbling it off, I'm just wiping off the excess. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna highlight the star because if I spatter these lights um, before I do that, then everything's gonna be wet and I won't be able to paint. So remember that spatters go last. Okay, so we'll get a big giant dome brush and we're gonna do the same brush mix that we did before. So I've got both colors. I'm gonna highlight with a swirl. If I had a lot of paint on my brush, this would be too um, base coaty looking. So you wanna make sure you really wipe off on your color. I'm gonna look just white, but dirty brush. So this is what I've got. This was where I was. And then this is the color I have now on my brush. So I'm just stepping back a little bit. Okay, now, we have to do numbers. This is super cool. We have got the etched circles on each one of these. So I am going to start backwards and we'll go with number one and then we'll move our way down. So as I was putting these numbers on these lights, um, I decided it would be lovely to have them pre-done on the stencil with the lights. So we are gonna actually redo this. That's the beauty of having me paint with my prototypes is we can do that thing. If you don't want the lights on your Christmas tree, but you like it in green or whatever you wanna do, then this would be a perfect stencil for that. Because this is not, so we're gonna pretend like you did not paint lights on your tree and so that you have this stencil, okay? So this is great, it has the circles, but keeping these straight is something that I'm not wanting to mess with. I want to have some straight lines on my tree. So I'm gonna use our Ghost Rider and I'm just going to give myself couple of lines. This erases with eraser, spit, water, all the things. I just need a couple of visual lines. On your stencils all of them are laser cut and that means that they are all have a perfect straight edge the material is 7.5 mil and that means it's sturdy enough to lean a little pencil or something against to make your straight line so this is a great tool to know about this has four straight edges so i could have just used this stencil even so put that back and now we'll continue on Duh. Okay, now we're gonna take our click eraser and we will get rid of, I'll show you, demonstrate. You can erase just by wiping it off. Um, you can do water. You can use your eraser. Be careful about erasing through your numbers because that paint is fresh. If you mark in freshly painted paint, then you can 
capture your your um, line in your fresh paint. So make sure that you don't add lines unless you are dry. If you happened to capture any of your lines, um, what you could do is you can take your sponge and you can go right back over with just a little bit of your greens and just blend it out. Okay, so everything can be layered and layered. Um, stenciling is a layers game, so make sure that you remember that. I'm gonna use our paint water and we're gonna get our paint inky. I'm using white, number 27. And you want a heavy handed, handled um, brush to do this. And then you always be careful if you have your Gucci bag sitting on your table, get your things off of the table that you don't want paint on because spatters jump everywhere. Okay, so now we're going to, if I want my spatters to land right in the middle of the star, then I anchor my brush and then they'll stay mainly in the middle. Now I want to dry off the spatters. I don't want them smeared all over the back of my project. So now this is where that technique really comes in play. Okay, so I'm gonna thin out a little bit more. As with offloading, you always, always, always tap off your excess. Now I want these to land on the bulbs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get down close. So this was big, so I did it way up high, okay? And then these are little, so I'm gonna bring it down to here. So manipulate this. And then they land right on the spot. Now that's a hippie noodle trick. I don't think very many people know that trick. Okay, now I'm going to wipe behind the board. As I suspected rogue spatters. If I had any non-behaving spatters, what I can do is take Q-tips, but you can just wipe them off individually. If you got something right in the middle of one of your numbers, and you just didn't like where it landed, then just go and fetch them off with the Q-tip. Okay, and now we'll do a little bit more spattering at the top of the star. Okay, if I wanted it to snow, it's gonna be difficult to show you, let me get a board. If I want control, I drop it down and it'll stay right in its little area. If I want it a bigger, a bigger area, then I lift up the handle. If I want it to snow everywhere, then I don't anchor at all and I let it free fall. Okay, so there's three ways that you can control spattering. Okay, ready to get lit. Stipple. Ta-da! How fun is that? Love it. All right, let's put it together. All right, so we've got all the painting done. These are your pieces to go in through this little slot and then it goes down over the edge of the, um, the board to lock it in and then on the other side you have another one that goes to your back piece. The little holes are the front, that's where the bottles show their shiny colors so that makes them the ornaments. And then you put two more arms there and then it has a base that slides in. It's a little bit like you just like get get a friend, have somebody help you because it's just a little bit awkward when you're putting it together. Um, I would definitely varnish this. Um, anything that you're gonna store flat. So the beauty of this project is that you can take it apart and put it into a flat box or under a bed, in a corner, in a closet, whatever, and you don't have to have a huge box for this. Two pieces of cardboard um, taped together would be perfect storage. 
But when you store flat things, if you don't varnish them, then they can get janky a little bit, the things scrape against them, make marks, that kind of thing. So make sure that you'd give it a couple coats of DuraClear matte varnish. I hope that you learned so many techniques today. This one might be coming home with me, but that means I'll have to make a few more for the daughter-in-laws. If you like the video today, make sure you give us a thumbs up, that supports the channel, and then subscribe if you wanna see future content. If I want control, I drop it down and it'll stay right in its little area. If I want it a bigger, a bigger area, then I lift up the handle. If I want it to snow everywhere, then I don't anchor at all and I let it free fall. Okay, so there's three ways that you can control spattering.